Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. My name is Carlo Libertini. In this video, we're going to walk you through some of the important tips and tricks and techniques I feel are important to keep in mind when working with audio and you're doing time stretching. Why? Because, well, in this day and age, we're really kind of lucky. You can lock things to a grid or you can even create feel if you wanted. And Melodyne is a really powerful program, but we can simplify how the process works by just keeping a few tips and tricks in mind. And I'll show you how. Now, in your DAW might be a little bit different, but whatever we do within Melodyne is going to be consistent regardless of the DAW that you're using. So, in this session that I'm working with, I've got an acoustic guitar for an example and some electric guitar and some bass. But you're going to also notice that in my top track is a kick beat at 92 BPM. The session's at 92 BPM. Now, why do I do this? Sometimes rather than record to a clip track, I like to create my own B track. And that's what I created here with the kick drum. So if I'm recording like an acoustic guitar, I kind of want to hear an acoustic element to help guide me. So that's a little tip that I like to do, which will come into play in a moment right there. Now, if you notice here in Inspector, by default on my sessions that I create here in Studio One, you see that my tempo is set to time stretch on all of these tracks here. The reason why is so that if you bring an audio into Studio One now, it's gonna conform it to the tempo at 92 BPM. It's kind of like good housekeeping in advance. But again, your DAW might be a little bit different. But let's jump into Melodyne now. So what I'm gonna do is bring in the organic kick drum tempo track I created, and the acoustic guitar and the electric guitar. And I'm gonna right click and just, let's open them in Melodyne. Let's edit these files. And just like that, thanks to Audio Random Access, just like that, the files are now here. Here's our kick beat, acoustic guitar, electric guitar track. All right. And here you can see we have our kick drum track. Now you don't have to do this, but this is a little tip that I tend to use that really works for me. And I'll, and I'll show you more of a visual, but it does help me when recording acoustic instruments, as I said before. Now, the first thing I want to do is because we're going to be doing time stretching, I want to use the algorithm that is best for that. For example, if I select focus on the acoustic guitar track, you'll see that it correctly identified it as polyphonic because that's what it is. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is time stretching. So I'm going to come up to algorithm and choose universal. And I'm going to redetect this. And there we have it. Now what you're looking at here is very similar to the waveform itself. Universal is a great algorithm, the best one actually for time stretching. So there's another tip for you. And I'm going to do the same for the electric guitar. Under algorithm, correctly choose universal and redetect. Okay, now let's go back to our kick beat and I'll circle back to why I like to do this is I'm gonna select the gray icon and there you can see that overlaying now I've got, I'm seeing a visual of my kick drum tempo that I created with the acoustic guitar over it. Now I know my kick drum beats are spot on the money. So it's a little trick that I often do to help give me a visual aid uh, you know, for what I'm sonically hearing when I'm recording. Let's take a listen now to the kick drum and the acoustic guitar. As you can see. All right, now another tip I wanna give you is about your grid spacing. I think it's important to, uh, when you're working with audio, to understand uh, about the grid spacing. If you look at the audio right now, my I have my grid spacing set to quarter notes. Beat one, two, three, four. If you're not seeing these lines, I know they can be very faint sometimes. Here's another tip for you. Under settings and preferences, you can have the look of Melodyne. Right now I have it set to dimmed. Here's default. Here's dimmed. You also have a high contrast view and a high contrast two view. This might help you see those lines a little bit better. I like, I prefer dimmed. It's kind of what I'm used to working with. So there's another little tip for you. But if I wanted to change the grid spacing, I can come up here to my upper right corner and I could choose a different, I can choose a different note value. And you see that they're populating the lines now here too. So when I time stretch these, I have a better sense of more notes, more accuracy to help guide me. And you could choose anything here. Look at that. I'm, I'm dividing 
the measures up equally. All right, so there's another tip. All right, now let's start doing some audio editing. Here's another thing that I think is super powerful, and that is the timing macro. Now, of course, with great power comes great responsibility. You could do a lot of damage to your audio if you're not careful. So the next tip I want to give you is that perhaps you don't have to, in this case, in this case, being an acoustic instrument, that you want to lock every strum to the beat. It may not work because there's a lot of feeling in this playing. Um, so if you were to time stretch, if you were to not select any audio and I was just to raise the intensity bar, it's going to, look how everything is sliding. It's affecting the whole track, everything that's been analyzed within Melodyne. Sometimes what I prefer to do though is to select an area that needs a little bit of help let's say right here, let's say this section of audio, and with that highlighted, now it'll only edit the audio in that selected region. So in essence, what are we doing? We're targeting the areas that we feel might be problematic. So by targeting these areas and doing it this way, I think the results may take a little bit more work, but the results will be worth it in the long run. All right, let's 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 actually try that right now. Uh, let's see, just for an example, you could see that this drum comes in a little bit early. Well, let's say we wanted to change the feel of that. Let's uh, select the audio, let's say about that range there, come up to our time macro, and let's talk a little bit more about this. So I can quantize this to a, the quarter note beats. See how it's moving right there? Not bad. Triplets, quarter triplets, one eighth, one eighth triplets, one sixteenth. And this is goes back into uh, to tie in with our grid spacing view that we activated here, right here again in the, and if you can, you got to exit out is another tip. You got to exit out of the macros if you want to do anything else within Melodyne. Right click to our grid spacing there, okay? But right now we're going to leave it on that value and go back to where we were. Uh, sixteenth, 30 seconds. And your ears will be the judge. Because uh, different instruments, here's another tip for you, like an acoustic guitar with the strumming, may sound a little stretchy and out sometimes. Maybe not, depends on the performance value. But this technique works great on drums, any kind of percussive elements, uh, even, even on vocals. I've been on plenty of sessions where pitch wasn't the problem, but timing, I, I really, it works great on backup vocals. But you really have to do a little that can go a long way. So keep that in mind. Another one of my favorite settings is auto. We'll let the, the intelligence and Melodyne help guide us, if you will, in this one. Okay, you can see how it stretches in a little bit differently. And then again, here under track, I can select a reference track that has been analyzed. Has to be it audio that has been analyzed and available within Melodyne. For example, our kick beat, our acoustic guitar, or our electric guitar. If you add more, then here under this section, when you select track from the down, drop down arrow, you will see them populated here. I can actually time this now to the kick drum beat, which is basically the same as a quarter note. So that also ties in why sometimes I like to print a tempo track using an acoustic element. I'm more familiar to recording to drums myself, uh, being a rock guy. Uh, so I want to hear a great, you know, kick and maybe snare when I'm doing uh, recording for my click. So you can do that now and check it out. Locks it right into tempo. It's pretty amazing. Let's go. Let's go back to auto and check this out. Auto, let's see if it looks a little, yeah, a little bit different. If the behavior is a little different. Let's go to quarter note. That behavior is a little bit different too. I like auto. And then a little bit can go a long way. Here's another tip for you. We can do this in real time. So over here, I'm going to select a loop marker uh, between bar beat one, bar two, and beat one, bar four. And because of audio random access, you can see up here in Studio One and your DAW, if it's ARA compatible, set the same loop marker here in, in my 
uh, my, my bar. So now while this is looping back in real time, this is a real strength and advantage with Melodyne here. It's called real time audio editing. While that audio is looping, I can audition different groove reference selections and intensities while it's playing back. Now, I know it's going to do that for us too much here because I don't want to, you know, annoy your ears, but let's try it a little bit, okay? So I'm going to press OK. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me go back to where I was. Let me undo that. Let's set this to auto and let's bring it up a little bit. All right, I'm going to press play. And this audio is going to loop. And now just the section highlighted here, we can edit. Tighten that up a little bit. That actually sounds pretty good. Right at that area, do you see that? We tightened up that, that strum more on the downbeat on beat one bar three right there. Bring it up to about 60%. And then when you choose OK, you've applied your edit and you're good to go. Uh, let's bring in our electric guitar now. Let me take that out and let's bring in our electric guitar and I'm going to change that algorithm to redetect it again right there. And yeah, now you can see we could do the same thing with the electric guitar if need be. If I select this audio here, let's open up our macro again, and we could tighten it up probably a little bit more if we wanted. Again, you gotta let your ears be the judge. If I thought maybe this beat, let's see. Oh, we could also choose track again. Remember a kick beat track. <laughs> this is actually why I feel that um, Melodyne is one of those applications that you really need to spend time with when you're working because you always will learn something new and depending on the kind of audio and performance it's going to expose you to a different way of thinking what you may think may work for everything you'll be pleasantly surprised to learn that it doesn't and that's what makes this really great because as an audio editor I love the challenge. I also love being able to connect with the software, you know, on, on a more personal level. A lot of people I know get in a box and they'll just want to use the same techniques all the time, but you really can't because again, your source is going to be different, whether it's vocals, jazz, rock, R&B, pop, or drum performances or rhythmic el elements. So understanding the tips, techniques, and theories about how to generalize a lot of these principles can help you then go in and be flexible with your work. All right, let's bring in the acoustic guitar and the electric guitar, and we could fan them out a little bit here. And there we go. So in the middle here, you can see that I use my spread unison button. Um, let me hide myself. Spread unison button is right here. If you want to see overlapping audio, it's right there. And this little slider, by the way, will increase or decrease the waveform view only visually though, okay? Only visually. And there you have it. Now, keep in mind that obviously um, you'll notice that I changed the tempo a little bit here to going back to this area. It's because it's been Melodyne wants to redetect it. It understands that there have been some tempo changes made. And of course there have. That was the whole point of this. So now we can actually choose apply constant tempo for both files if we wanted. You can see that there's more options here. We can confirm that tempo. And we could copy the song tempo if we wanted from different files too. And, you know, like I said, it's a very powerful, very flexible program but the best way to find out is always for yourself. So don't be afraid to dive right in and experiment with editing tempo. And remember, a little bit does go a long way. You may not have to affect the entire track 
or just areas that you want to edit. Uh, you know, really, you know, sometimes a surgical approach is the best. And this is just a little bit of what Melodyne can do. So definitely visit Celemony.com, download the manual, read through it. There's such great information in there from such amazing people. And don't forget to visit some of the links below and always try it for yourself. My name's Carlo. Thanks for watching.